Okay. Hi, right. Martin. Well, today we have someone very special here, uh, someone very dear to our hearts in the Unleashed family, and that is the lovely Ed Williams. Now, Ed, oh my goodness, mate, it's great to have you here on Club on Thursday morning. Um, and Ed, you know, you've been uh, involved with Unleashed for, for many years and you've played loads of parts. You know, you played in our recent production, uh, you played Nicky Cruz uh, in um, Cross and Switchblade. You're one of the mechanicals in the Millennium Mysteries, which was written for us. Uh, you played the lead in Black Comedy and you played um, loads of parts in like Under One Roof. One to one row two, all those to say. So you've pretty much been, you know, all over the stage with Unleashed, which is fab, which is really fab. So, but you are, um, you are, um, you know, you've got an, you're a really interesting guy because um, for a lot of us, we look up to you and uh, you are a real inspiration to so many people, particularly me. And um, just tell us a little bit about what you do because I, I don't think a lot of people know exactly what your job is. You are youth protection. You're, you, you, Homeless Protection Officer, aren't you, for uh, Torbay Council? So what's you, that you, are you homeless? So I'm a youth homeless prevention officer. Um, so uh, I work somewhere between halfway between housing and, and children's services um, in preventing young people uh, becoming homeless, 16 and 17 year olds, um, and some 18 year olds and care leavers, things like that. Um, and working to identify whether or not the, the council owes them any duties. Um, whether there's any help we can give them uh, and mainly uh, doing a lot of work around mediating them and uh, talking to their families and sitting down and, and you know and, and sorting out the differences between them and their parents um, as, as many of us might know teenagers aren't they you know aren't the best tenants <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and parents and parents often find that and kind of you know move towards eviction uh, yeah. and that's what we do we you know we do a lot of work on that as well as educating young people and uh, and other professionals around the difficulties that these young people might face and uh, doing our best to keep them safe. I mean, it's a really good job, isn't it? I mean, so you're actually preventing kids uh, basically falling out their parents to the point where actually it's become unresolvable and they end up on the streets. So, I mean, my goodness, mm. you do an amazing job. But, I mean, you know, you've got such a lot of experience because before that you worked uh, at Leonard Stocks, didn't you? I mean, you know, you've had, other, you've had other jobs in the council, but you've worked at Leonard Stocks as well. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what you were doing before, um, you know, as a job before this present um, post. Well, I, I mean, I've got, I've got to be honest with you, Martin. One of the uh, one of the astounding things about uh, about my work is that I, that, I've, that I've done over the past few years. Um, you know, I, I you know literally you know come from a world of addiction and, and crime, and and the first time I got on my knees and asked for a job. You know, one literally came up within minutes, and you know, I, I, I can't deny that. And you know, some uh, I, I went into this job interview. Somebody said to me in you know the, in the church, and he said, you know, if if, uh, if God wants you to have a job, you put your feet up on the desk, turn up on your jeans and t-shirt, and you you'll get it. So that's exactly what I did, and <laughs> uh, and that's exactly why I got the job because that's exactly what I did. <laughs> um, so um, you know, I, I initially I worked in in the commissioning team. Um, I was seconded to them to to talk to people, to go out talking to people, vulnerable people in the community, to find out what their views were on the changes that were happening to services about 10 years ago. Um, and, you know, after spending a couple of years there, um, it was a bit of a no-brainer. I felt really cool to, to go and work in the hostel. Um, and I, I did a lot of outreach work with them, uh, going out hunting uh, down the homeless people on the streets and, and, and having coffee with them, which is, a you know, you can make a lot of ground by sitting down um, with somebody and having a cup of coffee where they slept for the night uh, and you know they, they make a lot of the progress themselves. Um, I, I'm, I moved from there to a more specialised job in community safety uh, where I was identifying the most vulnerable um, and most chaotic people in society and coming alongside them and, uh, and you know and walking with them and identifying what needs to be done in their lives um and you know if they, if they needed that extra little step you know i'd give them that extra little step if they needed to avoid prison and come out into the community um then we'd, we'd, we'd work with the courts to achieve that um and then from there i didn't really know where i actually came up at the right time again and and i didn't feel like i could do it I felt like i was you know way in my head and i probably was uh, and I found that just by going with that, I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, 
uh, and you know, looking to where, where he's going to take me next, really. It's been a bit of a journey, uh, but it seems to have revolved, you know, revolved around definitely, you know, a line that's been the same throughout every single job that, you know, that I've been blessed with um, yeah. and that I've been able to be a blessing to the community. And well, I think I'm alongside gonna... that, where I think alongside that, uh, you know, Unleashed has, has really, has really been a key part in that for me um, because I, I haven't, I haven't walked away from all my old friends and my old comrades because they've, you know, all been, you know, the client group that I've been working with have been people that I identify with and people that, you know, that know me. Um, and alongside that, I've had my own journey, my own, you know, you know, my own uh, progress in my recovery to go with. Um, and I've had to lean on, you know, lean on something. And I, I think I've been blessed myself to have been able to lean on, you know, the Unleashed Theatre Company. It's been, you know, it's been an absolute legend's place on these parts that you mentioned. It's just been so much fun. Um, but it's behind the scenes where all that fun is really as well, you know, me with other people and, uh, you know, that like me, you know, they're in recovery or oh my goodness. on their way to recovery, you know, they're all, you know, an absolute reminder. Yeah. Well, mate, you have. I mean, just to be fair, just you went slightly de- Dalek on us. We did like Star Wars a few weeks back. You went slightly sort of uh, dalek on us there with the old uh, internet. But my goodness, you played the lead in Black Comedy. Weren't you brilliant in that? Yeah. My goodness, oh. you were in the first Under One Roof uh, yeah. as a singer and doing lots of uh, drama. You were in Under One Roof too. Yeah, 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 yeah. You were also yeah. one of the mechanicals in the Millennium Mysteries. And then, um, yeah, incredibly, fun. you were just an unbelievable performer in the Cross and the Switchblade. So, I mean, you really are one of our lead uh, guys. And um, my goodness, what a, what a talent you are. But I mean, what is so fantastic, um, Ed, like you just said, is that obviously, you know, you haven't forgotten your roots. And, um, you know, the, work, the wonderful work that you do and that God's led you into, uh, working with, you know, ki- preventing kids from becoming homeless. You yourself, uh, 10 years ago, you've been, you were, for 10 years, out in the wilderness, how should we put it like that? I mean, do you want to just share a little bit about what that was and where you've come from? Um, yes, I, I, yeah, from, from uh, school age, I kind of got in with the wrong crowd, um, which I, I, I don't always say, people will call it the wrong crowd, but I don't call it the wrong crowd. Um, you know, I, I made some choices in my life that define my character. Um, and, you know, I, I had a quite, uh, you know, a well-known character within that community. Um, and it's still a community, you know, which I've got, I love and I, I love still being able to work with and connect with. Um, and I you know, never felt too distant from them. Um, but yeah, I was, you know, up, up to my neck in trouble, um, you know, prison and, you know, you know, spending all my time running from the police and, you know, tons of driving offences, working with some, you know, really dangerous, dangerous people around the country. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's easy to regret a lot of things. Um, but when the more I look into that, the more I see that actually everything, everything that happened um, contributes to what I do today um, and everything I do today. None of it was wasted at all. You know, there's, there's seldom people that are ever sat in front of me where I can't say, you know, I, I get where you're coming from. I mean, I don't necessarily understand what their experience is of it, but, I, you know, I certainly still, you know, I'm still one of them. Do you know what I mean? I never, I'll never forget the quarry that I'm chipped from, like you said, you know, I'll never forget that. And I'll never be more than two inches away from it. And because, you know, I think that's where I function. That's where I function best. Um, you know, and, you know, would I go back to it? You know, I don't, I don't think I would. Because I think I can make more use out of that here, um, doing what I'm doing. Um, you know, certainly managed to change a lot of people's uh, perception of my character by changing my character. Um, you know, people say that I'm still the same person, and, and you know, I vouch for that. I still very much am the same person that I was then. I'm just making different choices. Yeah, yeah. And my goodness, I mean, but you are uh, you are a bit of an inspiration to a lot of people, Ed, because you know, I mean, I know you don't want to go into it, but you were involved with a lot of really dark stuff. And uh, for te- you said, but you described yourself for ten years, you were like a career criminal. And we don't need to sort of focus on you know what you got up to. But I think what is fantastic is you know I I know you as a really good mate, and I have to say, you know, you've got such a massive heart for people who are struggling with addiction, people who are homeless, um, you know, and um, you know, I, I know where that comes from. What was the very thing that brought you to a point of wanting to change your life? I think, you know, there, there, were, there were lots of different points during my journey um, as a criminal um, where, you know, 
where something was looking out for me and someone was looking out for me and really making that difference. There were, you know, there were times where, you know, there was a, a moment, with, you know, for instance, where the police took me back to a burning wreckage on the M5. Um, and, and, and they looked at this, this car was, you know, black and smouldered and small and all crunched up. And I'd walked away from that pretty much unscathed. And, you know, and they, they sat me down and said to me, so don't, don't you think there is a God? that you have just called out of that is impossible. And there were lots of little things like that that were going along um, as I went along. And, and, and it's not until you get to a certain point of desperacy to absolute destruction when I had absolutely nothing, no money, no home. I didn't know where I was. I'd lost my mind. I, you know, I'd lost my mind so much I couldn't even go and find drugs. I didn't know where to get them anymore I just, you know, because I was that mad. It was at that point where I realized that I was probably at my richest at my most fortunate. And then I, and I realized that all of them different points had all come to one single conclusion where I could either make a decision and recognize this and say, you know, this is, this is actually something real. I'm gonna start asking, you know, I'm gonna start looking into it, you know, and, you know, and, and finding more out about it or go and carry on. And that's that one choice, that one single choice right there where you can, that can make the biggest difference in your life where you re reach this crossroads and go, Am I going to carry on or am I just going to go, okay, all right, okay, let's go with your plan. And, and, and I've gone with the plan, you know, I don't always know what the next step is, but I'll tell you what, it's the best thrills I've ever had in my life have been from doing this, um, you know, listening to this guy, you know, wh whoever he is, whatever it is, I don't profess to know. Um, but what I do know is when you just give it a go, <laughs> you know, stuff works out. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. Well, mate, listen, it's wonderful. And, um, you know, you've got a, a lovely family now and a beautiful wife and uh, yeah. you know, you're part of a great community of people who uh, love you and uh, respect you and look up to you. And, uh, you know, you, you, you're one of the church wardens at Mary Mags, which is uh, the forefront of, um, I would say, churches that sort of reach out to the vulnerable and those on the edge. Um, but, you know, I'll tell you something. I'm just so proud that you are such a big part of Unleashed because, uh, mate, I tell you, you, um, you know, you, uh, you are such a great performer. Let, let, let's have a little chat about uh, some, of the, some of the parts you've done. What would you say was your most favouritest um, moments on stage with Unleashed? I mean, there are loads to choose from, my goodness. Yeah, I think I've been thinking about that. One just keeps copping to mind and, that, and it's got to be black comedy. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it was just the the there's the so much work went into the uh, the physical comedy of that. Um, it was so much fun um, working with two different casts as well, because you know, um, but just knitting that whole thing together. Um, and it was done in an intimate theatre as well, which was kind of you know very close to the audience, and um, there was a lot of sacrifice. Thing you know, being. Um, spat on and <laughs> thrown over chairs and kicked around all over the floor and stuff yeah. like that. It, you know, it was it was painful. But I tell you what, just haven't done something like this before. We're taking such a big step um, into into acting and walking with these guys. Um, you know, was 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 a great thing to experience. Um, my wife was one of them as well. Actually, she's one of the one of the cast in in them. Uh, really great to work with her always with you know with everything I do um, and and some of my best friends you know I've, I've just absolutely loved it um, yeah. but I mean between black comedy and um, it's got to be crossing the switchblade yeah. um, which had just been you know huge journeys where we've learned a lot about ourselves um, yeah. and how we portray ourselves in the community um, and I think the contrast as well as black comedy wasn't a wasn't a uh, uh, you know, didn't have a, a faith element to it, did it? It was very tongue yeah. in cheek, um, yeah. uh, very naughty. Uh, we did have a little, there was a little prayer in there somewhere, wasn't there? <laughs> it's, uh, um, yeah, Brin the part of Brinsley, oh my goodness, it's a mega part. You're on stage the whole time, pretending to be mm. in the dark, throwing yourself around. It's such a physical role, but you were unbelievable. But then, you know, in contrast, like you said, um, you know, Nikki Cruz, what an amazing um, play. We spoke to David Robinson yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Um, but your portrayal of it was so um, filled with such um, integrity, um, Ed. And I know that in a way you were, you were, you know, you were perhaps, um, you know, uh, reflecting on your old life because my gosh, you were so scary. <laughs> in Act One, you were so scary, mate. I wouldn't want to cross you on a dark night. Um, but you know, it was such a great part, and you were absolutely. It's, 
it, it's funny, mine. There was some. There was actually somebody in the audience um, who'd come down from London to watch that one, uh, to come and see one of the other uh, one of the other cast. And she was my next door neighbour um, back then, and she didn't recognise that it was me until I started shouting and kicking off, and she was like, <gasps> she's like, it's Ed, and she come to see me, to, like to come and grab me outside. She's just like, it's you, like wow. <laughs> really good. good. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, guy, uh, what, what, what have you got? Have you got something you'd just like to say to the the, the lads? Because obviously, I mean, you know, I look at I look at you, mate, and um, you know, I, I think you know where you've come from. Your journey has been so interesting and so inspirational for a lot of people. Uh, what would you say to those guys who perhaps at the beginning of that, you know, they've just gone into Jatis and they're you know coming off the drugs and they're struggling with you know um, you know addiction? And stuff? Yeah, one. Well what one thing I, I you know I really want to say um, is 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 don't look at guys like me and think that I'm a million miles away from you uh, like uh, like I said earlier we can only be a few minutes away from our past you know uh, you know uh, it, there was only there's only one step to take um, and you know if you're in the jazz you you've taken that step you've made a choice if you're you know if you're in the rooms um, you know, you've, you've made a commitment to want to go in there. And that's a huge, that's a big step that I'm only just on the other side of, yeah? Um, and, you know, and, and the other thing I do want to say is like, if Martin's put in your ear and he wants you to get out there and have a crack at it, I just do it. Do you know what? <laughs> People aren't going to remember your faults or where you went wrong or where your line went wrong. It's worth the fun. It really is. Like every single time, just do it. <laughs> We've done madder things with our past. We've made more fools of ourselves. Just go for it. Back yeah. on it. You look back and you you know you look back at a few few shows on your shoulder and think, do you know I mean I've done this? And it's not the show. It's the people you've been there with. Totally. You know? um, Community. I, I, I think a lot of you get that message. <laughs> yeah. well, listen, Ed. Thanks ever so much for joining us, mate. You are always such a a joy to have around. You know, you're the sort of guy who, you know, is. It's just great to have around, and I just thank you for all that you've brought to Unleashed. Uh, you know, all the experience, but also, you know, your wisdom and your care for, you know, guys around who are sort of on a similar journey. You know, you're a lovely, caring guy, and, um, you know, I'm just so grateful that we've got you in the Unleashed family. So thanks, mate. Really appreciate you. Well, we've all got to say that we love you too, Martin. You're, <laughs> you're the rock. I, I know they're thinking it. I know they're thinking it when they're watching this. Yeah, no, nah, <laughs> seriously. No, Martin, thank you. Thank you, seriously, from all of us. You know, you know, I know I can speak for every one of us. We love you so much, and what you do is second to none. Uh, you know, and you know, you should be knighted, really. Seriously. Oh, love you. I've, actually, I've already been knighted by Alexa a few weeks ago. <laughs> 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 I love you, mate. Listen, you take care. All right. All right. You take care, mate. Thank you very yeah. much. God bless okay. you. Bye bye.